taking the break. We'll go straight across to this story, ladies now, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Now, it's a big story. It's an exclusive here at CNN News 18. And it's quite explosive and sensational. We must say that. Right now, on your show, we are exposing part of a broader pattern of influence and power that's being exerted by the World Sikh Organization established in 1984, designed to act as an umbrella organization for Sikh groups worldwide. It's actually lobbying for the creation of Khalistan. It's actually backing separatism, secessionism, breaking Bharat. And this shadow looms large over Canadian politics. Now what we're putting right now in front of you is the, the lens is on a former Canada Defence Minister and the current Emergency Preparedness Minister, Harjit Sajjan. Now Harjit Sajjan, his alleged closeness between Sajjan and pro-Khalistan groups has come to light. Harjit Sajjan is the President of the King's Privy Council for Canada and Pacific Eco Development Agency of Canada. He is the son of former World Sikh Organization executive Kundan Sajjan, allegedly directed Canadian military resources <coughs> towards the rescue of non-Canadian Afghan Sikhs. He allegedly acted on the directive of a Canadian Sikh group during the 2021 Taliban takeover. <coughs> the question is, which Sikh group was it? Based on his allegiances, we will try and ask this question, is it the World Sikh Organization? allegedly prioritized non-Canadian Afghan Sikhs rescue <coughs> over Canadian citizens themselves. That's the big story, ladies and gentlemen. He tried to, he tried to prioritize the rescue of Afghan Sikhs over Canadian citizens as the Canadian Defence Minister. Let's look at where the connection is and I'm going to check if the camera can zoom in as and when I point out because it's an elaborate floor chart. How is the, how is the connection? So who is Gyan Singh Sandhu? Gyan Singh Sandhu is the founder of the World Sikh Organization. If you can look at this, yeah, this is Gyan Singh Sandhu. What is his connection? Gyan Singh Sandhu is a contact of Jarnail Singh Bindranwale. Jarnail Singh Bindranwale is a contract, a contact of Sohan Singh Halan. He is a Khalistan ideologue and he is the father of Jasraj Halan who is currently a conservative MP in Canada. So this is the first Khalistani connection with Gyan Singh Sandhu. Now Gyan Singh Sandhu and there is a connection with Amarjit Sohi and of course you have Harjit Sajjan. Gyan Singh Sandhu is the father of Parbinder Kaur Shergil who is currently the Supreme Court judge in British Columbia. Then have a look at this entire chart. You have Ram Rakhbir, who is a former of the WSO president. He is the father of George Chahal. You have Kiran Bhinder and Tim Upal is the wife of Tim Upal. And then you have Javde Singh Grewal, father of Jyoti Gondek. And then you have Har Harkesh Sohi. Harkesh Sohi is also in contact to Navdeep Benz and he is the brother of Amarjit Sohi. Amarjit Sohi is linked to the World Sikh Organization and his connection is with Gurweet, Gurpreet winning and thereafter Manjit winning and Manjit winning and Harjit Sajan. So they are all linked to each other. This is a big, grand connection from Bindranwale to Jasraj Halan and their connection to Gyan Singh Sandhu and from there on to Harjit Sajan who is currently the Emergency Preparedness Minister but the former Defence Minister. What is the Sajjan connection to the WSO and Gyan Singh Sandhu who is a close aide and contact of Jarnail Singh Bindranwale? Let's look at the next chart. Now Gyan Singh Sandhu's son is married to Harjit Sajjan's sister. This is the conjecture. <coughs> son, Harinder Sandhu is married to Amrit Amarjit Kaur or Amarjit Sajan. She is the daughter of Kundan Sajan who is the father of Harjit Sajan. He is connected to the World Sikh Organization and again with Manjit winning and Prem winning. They all are business partners. One is the assistant and then they are connected to each other. Prem winning is the former WSO president and is a partner with Gyan Singh Sandhu and his son, his son Gurpreet winning is a special assistant to Amarjit Sohi. Amarjit Sohi is the current Edmonton mayor. So you see how this entire network is actually now embedded itself so deep into the administrative and political system of Canada that the entire network narrative itself, you know, 
is now pro Khalistan. Can we go back to the first flowchart quickly before we go across to our guests and also get you some more into, from the government reaction? Because I want to also bring in that this connection of Jagmeet Singh, he's the leader of the NDP. Jagmeet Singh is also connected to the World Sikh Organization, thereby with Amarjeet Sohi and thereby with Gyan Singh Sandhu and this entire group. And Jagmeet's party, NDP, is currently part of the government. They are the reason why Justin Trudeau currently still remains in power. Now we got more news coming through. Intel sources and top government sources telling CNN News 18 that an Alberta-based journalist report is not wrong. WSO is the umbrella organization to handle K activities across the globe. We can't expect K-backed minister to be fair and share the correct data also. And is that why the information is also that is being provided is skewed? WSO links now can be traced to the Beheria town in Lahore. WSO or the World Sikh Organization used as an influential club to carry out the K agenda. And WSO has hijacked the real cause of Sikhs in Canada. And WSO uses Sikhs in Canada for drug smuggling, terror activities and of course secessionist activities against Bharat. And they are also getting funding from the ISI, entities that are inimical, entities that give birth or thought up the K2 strategy, Khalistan and Kashmir, to try and create and break away a huge portion which they believe is equivalent to what was broken away from them in 71, that is East Pakistan, that is current day Bangladesh. Sushant Sareen, Puneet Sahani, join us this evening. Thank you. Namaste, Jai Hind. Your thoughts Jai on this entire WSO and its influence and what can be done? How can we counter this? Puneet Sahani and then Sushant Ji. Yes, Puneet. Jema Bharti Anand. So, you know, like I've been coming on your show and saying for two years that WSO is like, you know, Muslim Brotherhood. And basically it has infiltrated all the organs of the Canadian state. So, I understand, you know, you put this chart up. I know it. Most of the people will forget the names. The question is what you are doing. That is the thing. So, you know, we keep blaming, you know, like uh, Canada and yes, of course. But the first thing, doing India. WSO is not a banned organization. WSO was all involved in this Kisan Andolan. So first fix your house and then blame Canada. And when you make this Canada, you know, you made the case that they are trying to, you know, damage India, all that is fair. Canada will not act on that. The case you have to make is WSO, before the killings of Sikhs in Delhi, hmm. the WSO guy stood up on the, uh, on the inaugural, uh, on the, uh, what do you say, on the inaugural address. He said, we will not rest till hmm. we kill 50,000 Hindus. This is a genocidal call and they have not taken back. You have to make the case that WSO, when this investigation was happening of this uh, Kanishka bombing, that these people try to, you know, uh, misdirect the investigation. And the judge who is like John Major, he has basically noted in his report that these people are, you know, trying to obstruct it. So this is what you have to, you know, make this case that, you know, these people are damaging the uh, uh, Canadian life. And then they will act on it. And from our side, you know, what you said, I can tell you 100 more. But the question is why WSO is not banned. And I will tell you one more thing. Hmm. You know, when I said Modi ji has removed this blacklist or something. So if you look when this WSO, you know, they have pushed in a Canadian like what you have museums because the Canadians don't know anything. And we basically removed all this blacklist. So in that same period in Modi period, they have basically in like their museums, they have created where all, you know, like the Sikhs were killed by the Hindus hmm. and not people don't know more Sikhs than Hindus were killed by the Khalistanis in Punjab. And, you know, there is nothing. All that has been avoided. And then they instituted like a uh, organization called Insaf. And that is basically publishing all this Khalistani mass murderer and rapist. They are basically, they have creating so much material that they were some religious warriors. And all these Sikhs that they have basically, you know, removed, it has been done. So you you, you have to understand, you, you don't know what you are getting into. They are, they you are in the midst of a religious war. They are taking little, little children. Like, mm. I give you one example, and I will then I will rest Jee. for a bit. You know, there was, after Bindan Wale, you said the most dangerous guy, his name was Gurpachan Singh Manochahel. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Today, Manochahel is, by the way, his whole family is in Canada. Like all Khalistani mass murderers, all their families in Canada, that's how they went. But I tell you, you know, this recently, on the, they were celebrating that Manochahel has died, he was a religious warrior. I showed, and that journalist who did this reportage, he's still alive, his name is Ramesh Vinay. Mm. He went to villages, it's not an opinion. He basically goes and asks people, you know, the report is in India today, it's called Sexual Terrorism in Punjab. And in that, they mention, they tell the name of the people, it's a report and it's not an opinion, that Mano Chahal would go into sick houses and abduct sick women for his guys. So this guy used to abduct, uh, abduct and rape sick women. And there is a video of that time that when Mano Chahal had died, 
you know, he came from a village of on the border of Pakistan in Taran Taran area. So when he died, and that village is almost entirely Sikh, those Sikhs are celebrating Diwali. That this guy was such a monster, that he was such a mass murderer and a psychopathic rapist. And these people are, you know, celebrating that Manoj Chahal was a religious warrior, and they are teaching this little little children in the Gurdwaras. And there is no counterpoint from the Indian side. It's just like me or you know a couple of other people who are making this noise. What the hell is Indian government doing? That is my question to you. Sushant Sari. You know, Anand, I, I, I cannot but agree with what Puneet is saying. In fact, I remember many years back when we had first met, he had told me at that point of time that, you know, this business of ending these blacklists and going soft on the Khalistanis, thinking that they are now reformed, is going to come back to bite us really hard. Uh, and frankly, within a couple of years, it has started us biting us really hard. Uh, and, and, and even now, you know, we see denial. We see denial in Punjab. We see denial at, at the central government level. Um, I, I would really would love to know how many of these people you have named on this particular uh, chart of yours uh, have OCI cards. How many of them or their relatives or others uh, travel to India? Hmm. How many of their associates travel to India? I would really love to know this because I don't know whether there's any kind of a tab which is kept on these guys. But look, let's face it. Uh, and to give these 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 thugs their due uh, they have operated like a mafia organization they are a transnational criminal gang okay and mm. they are like a mafia they have infiltrated <coughs> they have inf infiltrated administration they have infiltrated uh, government in canada at the local level at the federal level at various levels now you can keep beating your breast and complaining about it but where is the counter narrative coming from us? Out here, the SGPC openly celebrates terrorists and nothing happens. There is no pushback from any other quarter. There, you know, the, the, the photographs of terrorists is, is plastered on the holiest of sites, which is the Harmandar yes. Saab, and there is no pushback from anybody. How does this work? What kind of a state are we living in? What kind of a jelly state is this that which simply refuses to respond, which simply refuses to get its act together? What are we waiting for? That when people will be pulled out of buses like they were in the 80s and massacred in cold blood, is that what we are waiting for? Are we waiting for when, you know, those incidents which uh, Puneet is describing, when those start happening in Punjab, is that what we are waiting for? Are we not realizing that for the last 20 odd years, this very poisonous alliance between the BJP and the Akali Dal has created a situation where these guys have been given a free run in the in the in the entire area. Yes. Nobody has said anything about it. Nobody has put his foot down on it. And even now, nobody is ready to do anything about it. Why? What kind of a state are we running when there is absolutely no action being taken? And please remember, the ISI doesn't have money to fund these guys. What the ISI does is facilitates them. The ISI is also like a tug organization, right? It's like it, it runs protection and extortion rackets. And what they do is that they allow, for example, they allow the gun running. They allow mm. the smuggling works. Mm. They allow the narcotics trafficking. And that is how many of these guys are gathering their money. These drone, drone drops which come in, they drop weapons and they drop dope in, in Punjab. That is happening as we speak. And nothing has been, there is no action. The Punjab police is one of the most corrupt organizations, overstaffed, inefficient completely. Hmm. You know, the, their EGP flies off of the handle the moment somebody talks about the Punjab police. But that is, right. that is manifest reality in front of us. We are seeing that happen on a daily basis. It's, the, it's becoming a lawless state. It's becoming a kind of a narco state in some ways. You know, and it pains me to say something like this. Because, you know, that's my home state. Yeah. Uh, it pains me to say it, but there is no evasive action which is being taken, no preventive action which is being taken. This... And, and frankly, we knew, for example, Anand, we had Captain Amrinder Singh, he knew the antecedents of this character, Correct. Hadith Sakran, this low life, right? He was the defense minister and we fated him in India. He went to Punjab, we allowed him to go out there. Many of these characters come out here, they party out here, they holiday out here, they carry out their poisonous propaganda in Punjab and in other parts of India. We let them get away with it, scot-free. There is no right. let or hindrance on them. 
how do you run a state like this what kind of national security are we then talking about i i i don't know it beats me completely well it is sad but true but something needs to be done we need to ensure that this kind of societal erosion doesn't happen because it take it happens over decades it happens over 2 3 decades and you got to you got to nip it in the bud and more importantly internationally look at the amount of trouble that they are trying to cause us it's these are pin pricks which are avoidable and if these pin pricks can be done away with and something like this as an organization it has to be taken down it has to be first up at least let's put out those names let people understand who these people are and what their antecedents are because they all work in a very company convenient camouflage of democracy etc i have positive time but we'll take another minute and okay. yes yes sushant sarin and puneet sania yeah anand just 10 15 seconds look my point is that one you know until and unless we are cracking down on these guys with evidence with proof in a proper manner right how to complain against canada we can't complain against them right so i think we need to get our house in order and then there have to be consequences that have to be visited upon the canadians that right. these thugs do whatever they want to do in canada but if something is you know blowing back into india Jee. then there are going to be very serious consequences of of something like that happening because the canadians Jee. are turning a blind eye to it right 30 seconds punit sani yeah so anand i'll give you an example you know these are fanatic they are lunatics they are you know mentally stunted whatever but they are fanatic and committed in their cause i'll give you an example so trudeau this was the second disastrous visit the first was also a disastrous visit because he brought a khalistani who was uh, convicted for uh, like you know attempt right. to murder his name was paspalatwan he was from wso what you are showing and he hmm. had basically said that wso has funded my defense hmm. now you see like the punjab terrorism the greatest uh, voice and right. who, you know so with dozens of you know bomb blast on his body his name was maninder uh, maninder singh bitta maninder ji singh bitta you 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 ask him you invite him sometime that guy did not kill anybody that guy got so many you know bomb blast on his body because he spoke against khalistan terror do you know he is right. fighting the case you know these people mass murderer he is fighting with his own money that these people and you know all the okay. money is coming from canada to defend this suicide bombers and and killers so this is how the indian state treats its own patriots and this is you know khalistanis are whatever but they take very good care of their mass murderers and terrorists so But some lessons that we like, need to okay, learn as to how to how to grow the flock which is patriotic which is fighting for ma bharti but on the other hand you also have to develop device base where you can break down the tentacles of this hydra which is becoming an increasing threat for us geopolitically and also internally a huge cause for concern vis-a-vis in, in, internal security Sushant sorry you know i can just say like one thing Jee. i am speaking at present and you know like it's nothing i have got everything you know like i don't Jee. you know like i i don't want to say like i'm in a very good position and it's fine and you know like people are sacrificing so I, but i'm just honestly telling you i'm in this for 3 4 years there is no incentive and you cannot imagine the cost you have to pay you know to be a patriot and speak against this terrorist right. whereas it should be the completely the other way around the terrorist should have like cost right. to pay and the patriot should right. have incentive to speak out their voice right i'm way over time here sushant sarin punit sani thank you very very much we're going to wind up this edition of the right stand on that note brass